I had a falling out with Coach Lombardi. God, how I hated him. He wasn't Bobby Dodd. That was the problem. Well, neither was anybody else. And when I was his starting center in Super Bowl I, and he put me on the expansion list to be claimed by the New Orleans Saints, he called me. He was cordial. Bill, I'm so sorry. I had to put you on that list. That's the way the game works, and they claimed you. Thank you for your service to the Packers. We will not be working together anymore. I sat the phone down, and I fell on the floor, <laughs> and I wept and wept. And Carolyn stood with her hand on my shoulder, wondering, what do I do with this basket case now? And so when I had fought back, and thanks to the good graces and the patience of Don Shula, who saved my career, and to whom I owe everything of a football nature, along with all my other coaches and my folks, we got into Super Bowl III. I was the only player there that had played for Vince and for Don Shula, so naturally the papers couldn't get to me fast enough. And having never been interviewed in my life, I was an offensive center. I was an idiot, and I just blasted Coach Lombardi. A year later, I ran into Paul Horning, and he wanted to fight. He said, what you did with the old, about the old man, that was brutal, that was nasty, and it was uncalled for. I said, what I did about the old man was exactly what he deserved. He said, well, let me tell you something. That headline in the New York Times, Lombardi not Curry's dish, Coach's mom read that, and she cried because of you. And Paul was ready to take me on, and that was just fine with me. He said, I'll tell you what, if Coach saw you, he'd treat you like his long-lost son. I said, if Coach saw me, he'd treat me like dirt, which is the way he treated me when I wanted to stay on y'all's team. Well, wouldn't you know it, it wasn't a month later, I'm at the president's prayer breakfast in Washington, D.C. My coach, my former coach, is now taking the Redskins job, and I'm walking up some very narrow stairs. Guess who's walking down, and there's no escape? Vince Lombardi. He greeted me like his long-lost son, and I felt about that high. Within a few months, he was in the hospital dying of cancer, and another teammate, Bob Long, came by where I was staying. I happened to be in Washington. He said, you and I are going to go see Coach Lombardi. I said, oh, I don't think I can do that, Bob. He said, oh, well, you're going to, pal. We're going to go light a candle for him. We're going to his room today. I really didn't know if I could do it. With my knees shaking, I walked in the great man's hospital room with Marie, his wife, and Bob Long and Sonny Jurgensen. And his right arm was all... IVs and tubes. So I took his left hand and I said, Coach, I was misquoted on a couple of things, but I really said a lot of that stuff and I'd like to apologize and I'd like to tell you that you meant a lot to my life. Well, he squeezed my hand and with those same steely eyes looked into my soul and he said, well, you can mean a lot to mine if you'll pray for me. With that, I had to leave the room. And it took me years to process what had happened. But this great man had forgiven me. And so rather than me ministering to him, once again he had ministered to me. Unexpected, undeserved, unrewarded, and undeniable.